Hey everybody, and welcome back to another Max Velocity weather forecast. And in today's forecast, we'll be talking about a large storm system that is going to be developing across the United States over the next week. And this is going to bring some problems, including the potential for flooding rainfall, much colder weather for parts of the United States, and perhaps a sneaky severe weather threat that could impact the Ohio Valley, Northeast, and Mid-Atlantic region as we go later into the week. So let's begin with what's happening across the United States this morning, which overall across most of the country, it is still pretty quiet. The only area that's really picking up on activity has been predominantly Texas and Oklahoma. We actually had some pretty significant flooding back over near San Angelo yesterday. There's been a ton of rainfall over in Texas over the last few days, and you can thank the abundance of moisture down there that is just continuing to fuel showers and thunderstorms, and that's going to continue throughout Tuesday as well, and as well as as we go into Wednesday. Now, as we go throughout the week, we are going to see this moisture really start to pick up more to the east, and we're eventually going to see a relatively large storm system develop all the way from the northeast back through the southern plains. This will bring the potential for flooding rainfall, a very active weather pattern, the potential for severe weather as well, and on the back side of a trough that's going to develop later this week, we are going to get a pretty big cold blast across the Midwest and the Ohio Valley, and we actually could see some areas in parts of northern Minnesota and northern Wisconsin get their first frost or freeze of the season, so definitely some stuff to watch for there. Yeah. Now let's talk more about the weather that's going to be impacting the United States over the next week or so, and we're going to begin with the future radar, which as of right now, we have a high pressure system that is dominating across the Northeast and as well as the Ohio Valley and the Midwest, which is keeping things relatively dry and as well as a little bit above average when it comes to temperatures for most of those areas. And then just down to the south of that, we have plenty of moisture, which is going to continue to bring the potential for showers and thunderstorms for the next few days from Texas all the way back through the Southeast. Once we go into Wednesday and Thursday. Notice how showers and thunderstorms just continue near the Gulf Coast in the southeast. We're also going to see the return of some showers and thunderstorms in the northern and central plains as we go into late Wednesday night. And there is actually a low risk for severe weather in parts of Nebraska, North and South Dakota for mostly just wind and hail. Once we go into Thursday, we're going to start to see more moisture kick up across the southeast. And eventually as we go into Friday, this is going to start to organize into a bit larger of a storm system. We're going to have a trough coming out of Canada it's going to be relatively weak, but this is going to bring the potential for showers and thunderstorms as we go into Friday across parts of Canada and as well as the Ohio Valley. I would not be surprised if we do get a small little severe weather threat in Ohio as we go into Friday. Now, right now, it does not look like it's going to be anything big, but we could see some damaging winds, and we also could see an isolated tornado threat on Friday develop back over in the Ohio Valley. So something to watch for there. And then once we go into Saturday, I wouldn't be surprised if we see a yet again another Another risk for severe weather develop, this time being in the Northeast for areas like uh, Virginia back into New York. This one could be a little bit more of a robust tornado threat, but there's a lot of you know question marks right now on what's going to happen on Saturday. The setup might not be very favorable for tornadoes, but we are going to have some wind shear there. So that'll be something to watch for on Saturday. Notice how the European model does have this intensifying to a stronger low pressure system as we go into Saturday and Sunday. That is another reason why we could see severe weather develop. And then as we go into Sunday, we could see another you know low-end threat for severe weather in New England, but it doesn't look like anything too concerning. But for severe weather, I think Friday and Saturday will be the main days to watch for. On the back side of this low-pressure system, cold air will usher in. Big dominant high-pressure system will dominate from the southern plains all the way back into parts of the Midwest, and this will bring some cooler and as well as drier weather for a large chunk of the country. When it comes to total rainfall accumulation between now all the way through the end of this upcoming weekend, notice the bulk of the rain is going to be along the immediate Gulf Coast and as well as Texas, and then we're going to probably pick up several inches of rain back over in the Northeast and back into parts of Canada as we go throughout the weekend. There is a large gaping hole, though, anywhere from the Northern Plains back into the Ohio Valley, and I'm not really expecting much of any activity in these areas other than just isolated to maybe scattered showers and thunderstorms on a couple of occasions, but nothing looks you know crazy, at least over the next week or so. Here's what the European model looks like for the jet stream over the next few days. The reason why I'm showing you this is as we go into Friday, notice this large trough coming out of Canada. And the big reason why I'm pointing this out to you is because this particular event that we are going to be witnessing this weekend is something that's going to become a lot more common in the fall and as well as once we get closer to winter, because this is what brings us the potential for Arctic blasts. Now, I'm not saying this will be an Arctic blast this weekend, but it will bring you know below average temperatures by quite a stretch across the Midwest and as well as back through the Ohio Valley. So that's why we're talking more about this system and also 
also I did want to point out is as we go throughout the weekend, the high pressure system is just going to build across a large chunk of the country. This could keep things relatively dry as we go into the second week of September across the Great Plains. So if you're looking forward to some nice weather in September, that should be some pretty good news for you. Now, over the next several days, the temperatures are going to continue to stay below average today from Texas back into the Northeast. Warmer weather, though, will arrive as we go later into the week before we have that cold air build up back up in Canada in the Midwest. That's just going to drop on down throughout the Midwest in the Ohio Valley, bringing the first feeling of false fall to the Midwest in the Ohio Valley. That cold weather is just going to continue throughout the weekend, and then by next week, it is pretty unlikely that that's going to really build up again. So heat will start to return, especially to the Northern Plains and back through the Pacific Northwest. But keep in mind, we're going closer to mid-September now. This is pretty nice weather. You know, we're getting closer to fall. A lot of people are getting excited. Maybe some snow coming at some point here soon. We'll definitely have to wait and see on that. Temperatures over the next few days, tomorrow afternoon, high temperatures in the 80s in the Midwest and the Ohio Valley, some upper 70s as well. And then back through the Southern Plains, most areas in the 80s or low 90s. Look at this though, as we get closer to the weekend, this is by Saturday morning. Many areas in the Midwest and back through parts of the Northern Plains will be in the 40s. So very nice, chilly morning for those up there, maybe need a jacket. And even Sunday is going to be kind of the same way for temperatures in the morning hours. Now, Sunday afternoon, high temperatures will be in the 60s and some low 70s. So not too shabby there. Saturday afternoon, depending on where you are, it could be a little bit chilly. Some parts of northern Michigan might only be in the 40s for high temperatures on Saturday, which is kind of shocking to say again for early September. Temperature trend over the next several days, according to the Climate Prediction Center, does indicate below average temperatures are likely from Texas back through the northeast with the main corridor for the greatest chance for that being in parts of Pennsylvania, New York, and Virginia. And then the warmest of the weather will continue across the western tier of the United States with above to well above average temperatures continuing. Precipitation, unfortunately, does not look great if you're anywhere in the Midwest, Ohio Valley, or in the Northern Plains, but that might be a good thing if you don't want severe weather. This is kind of your news here. Should be pretty isolated at least over the next few days. Now, the tropics are still relatively quiet across the entire Atlantic Basin, which is really shocking for early September. We do have two areas of development, but neither right now look like major threats to any land. We do have one area of development right now in the Caribbean Sea that is moving towards the Yucatan Peninsula. There is a chance that this does develop. It's about a 40% chance over the next seven days. It's going to probably be a pretty slow development, and if it does develop, I do think it'll probably be in the southwestern Gulf of Mexico. At this point, does not look to be anything more than just a tropical storm, but that could again change over the next few days. And then also, we have an area of development in the eastern Atlantic Ocean. That one could also become something, but again, not looking too concerning for land at this point. Now, notice this is the ensemble members giving an idea of the track of whatever might develop here over the next few days. Beginning with that first tropical system, most ensemble members do not have this doing much of anything, but some do bring this into the southwestern Gulf of Mexico and really gradually develop this maybe into a tropical storm. There's really no indication right now that this is going to become a big hurricane right now, but just purely due to the fact that it has not really developed into much of anything yet. But we'll continue to keep a close eye on that. And then a couple more tropical waves may develop back over in the eastern Atlantic Ocean. But again, notice most of these tracks not really bring this to much of anything. The only tropical wave that may develop over the next few days is not even actually outlined by the National Hurricane Center yet. And this one might develop into something, but again, long term is very questionable. The ensembles have been kind of all over the place over the last few days with any tropical cyclone development. I'm not really expecting anything major though over the next few days, which is good news if you're in the United States. Just continue to stay vigilant as we are in the peak of hurricane season. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like the button down below and subscribe if you've not already.